This year at CES, Razer unveiled their Nomo speaker lineup. And although I don't have time to play video games, I can appreciate their design and aesthetics. Although they do perform pretty well, they do have one major Achilles heel. But I still like them so much, I'm gonna do a giveaway. Just like the video, be subscribed, and comment down below with what's your all-time favorite video game. And as soon as this video hits 2,000 likes, I'll pick a winner. Razer's Nomo speaker lineup consists of three models. There's your base Razer Nomo speaker for $99.99. There's the Razer Nomo Chroma, which is the speaker I have here for $149.99. And then there's the Razer Nomo Pro for $499.99. Now there are some key differences between the base Nomo speaker and the Nomo Chroma aside from the RGB base, which I will go into in a minute. But these first two speakers are currently available for sale. If you wanna pick either of them up, I'll have a link in the description below and if you use the link, it really helps out the channel. And the release date for the Nomo Pro is still to be announced. The Razer Nomo Chroma comes included with two cables, the power cable and an audio cable. The other two cables on the Nomo Chroma are not removable, and personally, I would prefer if they were braided. Now, the main difference between the base $100 Nomo speaker and the $150 Nomo Chroma, aside from the RGB goodness, is that the Nomo Chroma connects to your computer via a USB port and has a built-in DAC, whereas the base Nomo speaker connects to your computer via a 3.5mm audio jack. But everything else is still the same. They both have three inch custom woven glass fiber drivers and they both have rear firing base points. But to be honest, if you're looking into these speakers, you're probably just going to end up going with the Razer Noma Chroma cause I mean, come on, just look at that base. On the base of the Razer Chroma, you have two knobs, one for volume and one for base. When you power them on, the right base shows you the current volume setting in green and the left base shows you the current base setting in blue. And when the speakers are muted, both bases shine red. Through Razer Synapse, you can choose from four different lights settings. There's breathing, spectrum cycling, static, and wave. You can also adjust the brightness of the effects, but customization here is a little limited. If you want even more customization options, then you'll want to fire up Synapse 3 on a PC. But I'm personally very pleased by the RGB lighting. The colors are very vibrant and you can even see the RGB effect in almost every lighting condition. Now let's talk about sound. As mentioned before, you have dual 3 inch diameter woven glass fiber drivers. And for their price, they sound pretty good. And through Razer Synapse, you can also choose from 4 EQ presets. Default, game, movie, and music. But obviously, you can also just make your own. But plainly said, the default setting sounds awful. The game preset pushes the mids back and puts an emphasis on the lows so that when there are explosions or shots on screen, you feel that extra dimension. And with the bass setting cranked all the way up, the normal chroma can really start rattling things around. And the music preset isn't half bad either. The mids and vocals are brought to the front and there's a good kick in the bass with very minimal tinning in the highs. And like I said, the normal chroma sounded better than I expected, especially in the mid-range. They have a lot of punch in their bass, but don't expect any reverb in the lows. Their soundstage is obviously good because of their left and right channels, but instrument separation does take a hit. More nuanced sounds like let's say an enemy reloading can easily get lost or overwhelmed by the bass. At max volume, the Nomo Chroma gets almost as loud as this JBL boombox. And at that max volume, distortion is minimal, but everything just starts to get overpowered by the bass. And for those wondering, there's almost no hissing when the Nomo Chroma is just sitting on your desk with the volume all the way up. But now, let's talk about the major design flaw found on the Nomo Chroma and maybe even on the much more expensive Nomo Pro. And that's between the bass and the neck of the speaker. 
Obviously, due to its design, these speakers are very top-heavy, and unfortunately, the construction between the neck and the base is very weak. My speaker fell a distance of about 3 inches onto the top of the desk and landed squarely on its base, but due to the torque applied to the joint between the base and the neck, it just snapped. And upon further inspection, you can see that the screws used are just way too short. Had Razer used longer screws or more robust marriage between the neck and the base, then I feel it wouldn't have snapped as easily. And I'm pointing this design weakness out for a few reasons. If you're in college and if you're moving in or out of your dorm, you have to be very careful about transporting these speakers. If you somehow topple either of these speakers off of your desk, I doubt they will survive the fall. But more importantly, if the Noma Pro has a similar construction, then I feel this joint will be even less effective because the top of the Noma Pro will be even heavier because of the addition of the tweeters on the top. I'm just saying, Razer needs to fix this issue because the minimal effort it took to snap this joint is just disheartening and not a good look for overall build quality. I was very impressed with the build quality on the Razer Siren X, but personally, I'm a little disappointed in the build quality on the Razer Nomochroma. But still, I do like the Razer Nomochroma. They look like jet engines on your desk, but they are a fingerprint magnet. Their mid-range sounded better than I expected, and their punchy bass gives games that extra dimension that immerses you even more. And come on, that RGB bass is just super cool, and it'll be even better when used with Synapse 3. But like I just said, they are more fragile than I would like. That neck is just such a weak point and it makes transporting these speakers a nightmare. But let my misfortune be a lesson for you. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It helps out more than you realize. For more product reviews and deal alerts, check out jimcaddy.net. If you want to support the channel, pick up a shirt and I'll catch you next time.